Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this morning I'm going to tell you about one of my greatest pet peeves in the world, and that is dealing with government agencies, whether it's going to get a driver's license or going to renew a car tag. I hate that more than anything in this world, and the reason that it drives me up the wall is because Governments that have monopolies on things such as you have to go to them to get a car tag or you have to go to them to get a driver's license. It is not a coincidence that every time you try to call them, they don't answer the phone. And every time you go, it's some long line. And the reason that it's that way is because they don't have competition. If you introduced competition into the equation and all of a sudden they were competing with other businesses for all that driver's license money or the tag money, all of a sudden, that phone would begin to be answered. And if there's not a lesson in life right there about the free markets and competition, I don't know what where there is. Um, and that's why it drives me crazy because I, I, the, the idea of, of a, an organization just being given free, free uh, you know, easy money like that and having no competition and being allowed to be lazy and to be sorry like that drives me crazy but i will say this this morning i had the best experience that i've had in a long time uh going to get a, a car tag it was much better than it has been in the past but not but i did call the tag office yesterday and to try to find out some information before i went down there and of course they didn't answer the phone <laughs> None of that's a coincidence, folks. Okay, first from my James Bond friend, at E-C-O-S-S-E-X-R-P-1. Um, is, this is from Wietseven. Uh, um, as you probably noticed, Bit, BitTrue is a big XRP fan. As they offer many XRP pairs, it was a no-brainer to partner up to make it easier for users to deposit other cryptos to the XRP tip bot using BitTrue. Their tokens of appreciation will go back to the community. And so um, he and he put this little graphic of the different things uh, going on. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Uh, he's, he's making all kinds of progress and doing a lot of great things for the XRP community. <clears throat> all right, and next from Michael at VAL5Links sent me this. Now, this, I mean, XRP Neo has been on fire and he is at XRP underscore Anderson. Uh, I'm not going to read through this whole thing. I just wanted to show you he's, he's done a, a, one of those 15 um, comment threads where he's making the case for XRP as a world reserve currency. I'll go through just a little bit of this. What are the goals for XRP when it comes, what are the goals for Ripple when it comes to XRP? At Ripple Insights, we can read, we remain more committed than ever to the simple goal of making XRP the world's reserve digital currency. Now, now what does this actually mean? And, he, and it says, uh, he took a, 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 a little line out of there. We remain more committed than ever to the simple goal. That, that was actually the words of people from Ripple. What does being a world reserve currency include? It has two parts, held in significant quantities by governments and institutions as a part of their foreign exchange reserves and commonly used in international transactions, international invest investments, all aspects. And then he went to Wikipedia. He's got the definition of reserve currency. Um, and then uh, that's interesting. We know it has been planned for XRP to become the global settlement asset but it hasn't been known that governments and institutions are going to hold it as a part of their foreign exchange reserves. So anyway, I've read through this. You can keep going through that, go through the whole thing because he really does. He does. He, he makes a great case when he does these, these threads. And, and this is, you know, to me, the fact that ripple said this is a monster in itself. So you should definitely go and read, read his thread. Really cool. Um, 
I, I've been more on the on the side that would that would say it's more likely that um, XRP would be a bridge currency, but may it maybe as part a part of that, um, maybe Ripple's goal still is to make it a global reserve, but. It just seems more likely to be a, a like a bridge currency. And I, what I've always thought is that ultimately these central banks would create their own um, digital assets. Maybe XRP will be in a basket at some point um, with those. Um, we'll see. But, but the, the main point is that Ripple's goals are far and away much larger and huge compared to all these other digital assets in the space period. Um, but go read his thread. That's, that's a good one. Okay. Next, I got this from XRP James T at XRP James. And he sent me this. If you're not aware of it on Craigslist, they have a, a box you can check now, um, that cryptocurrency is okay. In other words, when people are selling uh, things on Craigslist, um, they can make themselves cryptocurrency friendly and that, that will tell you that they accept cryptocurrencies in the transaction. That, my friends, is adoption. Craigslist is a monster. Um, and next, this is XRP Crypto Wolf. France's new crypto law grants blockchain related projects the right to a bank account provided they opt in to being regulated. The framework will be operational after the publication of the implementing decrees, which will be by May or June. So their crypto law grants um, blockchain related product the right to a bank account. So remember this folks for the last year, two years, we've seen banks that have denied people being able to buy cryptocurrencies, um, businesses that are crypto related, not being able to open bank accounts. This is started. This is the beginning of that being shut down, and then the banks are going to be forced to make a decision: Are we crypto friendly or do we die? Simple as that, folks. I'll, I'll keep saying it. Japan. This is from Sergeant Obi One. Japan's finance minister urges reporters to adopt new legal term crypto assets. Now, why would Japan's finance minister want a new term? The reason that they would. The reason they would want a new term is because he wants the media to help to begin to help sell crypto assets. See, for the last five, six, seven years, or however long, um, the word cryptocurrency has been, you know, before these governments and before the world began to shift to, to start, uh, to, to begin to get into this digital asset space, they used the term cryptocurrency and they called it money laundering and all, all kinds of negative associations with it. Well, now this is that the reason this is such a good sign. Now you're starting to see governments and wall street and all these people there, there in this case, he, he's wanting them to refer to as crypto assets over here in the U S they're, they're saying digital assets, but the reason that they want to do this is because they know, that it's about time to begin selling it to the public, to the retail public. And so he wants his media to begin referring to it a different way because he knows that they've scared the public with all the cryptocurrency talk. So that's a great thing. That tells you where things are going to go. Next from X-Men XRP at XRP 33 sent me this. Samsung plows $2.9 million into crypto hardware wallet giant ledger. And I think that speaks for itself. I'm, I'm always telling you about how the only safe way to store your digital assets for those of us that are retail buyers is to put it on a ledger nano S, which you can get one in the description of every video I've ever done. Um, you can go and go to their website and, and get one of these. It's a hard wallet where you can store, keep your private keys offline. Um, so it's not a coincidence that Samsung, one of the largest phone makers in the world, is investing in the ledger company now <laughs> they're getting they're coming in folks um and then okay what i'm about to show you i have seen a ton of negativity i've seen a, a lot of xrp fud over the last couple of days i've seen a lot of people that have been uh in the xrp space and i've seen a lot of them going negative because oh these other digital assets have been moving uh, while XRP has been sitting still. Well, Leonidas put up something 
um, really good today that puts all of this in perspective. You need to definitely give him a follow at Leo, H-A-D-J-I-L-O-I-Z-O-U. This guy knocks it out of the park on a consistent basis. These, this is one of my favorite tweets he's done in the last year. And he, there's two pieces of information in here that you need to see. I'm asked often, oh, well, how can you be so positive about XRP? How, how, why are you always so optimistic about this? That's not, you know, that just sounds like you're just too optimistic. I hear that kind of mess all the time. Well, there's, there's a few, uh, there's three or four core reasons that I'm so optimistic. This is the first one that I'm going to show you, but I'm going to show you the others next, okay? I'm going to show you why. No matter how negative any of you out there get, I will not be negative because I know what is happening. I know what has happened and I know where this is all going. And it's very, it's all right there in your face. It's right in front of you to see if you want to see it. Now you can go negative. If you do, instead of selling, I recommend that you store your digital assets safely on a Ledger Nano S and then you just get out of this. Don't sell. Put it on your Ledger. Make sure your digital assets are safe put them away and go off and don't look at all of this anymore. But what, what per one thing that drives me crazy is these people who they, they can't deal with all of this. And instead of just doing what I just said, which is put your digital assets. this, I told people here on this channel, I did this myself in 2015 to up to 2016. I put mine away and forgot all about them. I thought I was wrong at the time. Now I know I'm not wrong. But at the time, I thought, okay, well, maybe I was wrong about this thing. But I'm, what I'm about to show you is all the reasons that I now know I'm not wrong and all this negativity. If you get negative, don't try to, don't try to spoil um, the positivity in this community. Just put yours on a, on a ledger and disappear for a while. That's okay. But all these people that try to spread poison, I don't understand it. I see people come in here that, have, that haven't been in the community for a while, which is fine. But don't come in here just to dribble your negativity on the community. That doesn't serve any purpose other than just being nasty. That doesn't do anything for you or anybody else. Um, but let me show you why I don't ever go negative and won't go negative because I know what's coming. I don't care what anybody says. It's so in your face obvious. First, from Leonidas. He, someone had asked him to show the yearly lows of XRP. Now, I want you to look at this. And the reason that I'm in a position to talk about this is because I was there in 2013. I was there. I've been here for all of this. Look at the, the, the yearly lows of XRP from 2013 to 2018. Okay. That's the first thing I wanted to show you. The next thing that I wanted to show you is this further in his, in his, um, this tweet, XRP historic highs and lows. And I want you to look at that. And I want you to look at the percentage differences in, in this as well. Okay. I want you to just take a hard look at what, what all has happened over the course of this time period. Okay. Um, and, and if you really let all of this sink in and you really look at this picture, and now what I'm about to show you against the backdrop the drop of what you just saw. Okay. Now what, what's significant about this to this, when I'm looking at it is I know what was going on back then. I know what was going on back then and then, and then, and then I know what's going on, what was going on then versus what's going on now in this, not just for XRP. Yes. For XRP and ripple specifically, but also for the digital asset space overall. And this is why I never go negative because there's not a reason to. Um, here is the first reason. This is from XRPist at a underscore Australia 22. Let the Ripple team build the infrastructure. They need to grow. And meanwhile, we freaking slowly, slowly fill our bags with, with whales. Don't you guys want to become whales of the future? And, you, and yeah, that needs having patience. Okay. This end of 2017, I've said this many times on this channel. This is what 2017 looked like when we went up as high as like $3 and 84 cents. The things that have been done since that bull run 
are way, way, way far ahead of where we were back here in 2017. The exchanges that have been added, um, the things that are going on like Coil and the tip bot and Codius and Spring and all of the things that are popping up from the Spring Initiative, not to mention the deals that Ripple has made, the going live with X Rapid, all of the things that are in the works. Now, just because a lot of those things are not reflected in the price does not mean that they won't. Of course they will. Um, it's just a matter of time. I always say this, but it's not just the things that are happening for XRP and for Ripple that are way, way above and beyond anything you've seen happen in any other digital asset. It's also this. From Crypto Utility Guy, at Utility Guy 7. Look at this. Now, I've talked about this many times from having been a financial advisor. This is the digital asset space overall. This is the modern, this is called the modern portfolio. At Grayscale Investments, you're beginning to see them sell it, but, but we already know that Wall Street's coming in. It's everywhere. We've seen it. We've talked, they, they've talked about it. The case for allocating to digital assets. We believe digital assets are one of the most exciting investment opportunities of the 21st century. In our research report, we demonstrate why we view digital assets as a new asset class that can enhance strategic asset allocation and help investors build portfolios with higher risk adjusted returns. New, ass new asset classes are rare and powerful because they offer a unique return stream that can diversify a portfolio. This might seem like a simple concept, but few investors truly appreciate the impact this can have on return risk port profile of a portfolio and sub subsequent wealth creation. Now, what I want to show you here is that what, what, what they're showing you here is how, how allocation should be done into digital assets. What I've said since I started this channel is that as a financial advisor, they teach you to, uh, when you talk to a client, to that, they, that you tell the client that based on their risk um, assessment, you know, usually people that are closer towards retirement will be heavier in things like bonds that pay them an income and are less risky than things like stocks or growth stocks or emerging markets type things like that. Well, what I've said all along is, is when, when I first saw this, I told my wife, that if this is what I think it is, if digital assets, and at the time we called them cryptocurrencies back in 2013, but I told her, if, if these cryptocurrencies are what I think they are, which is going to be a new asset class, then this will be allocated over time to every portfolio from by every financial advisor across the world, whether it's retail or institutional. And if that happens, it is on, folks. It's on. And that's what they're talking about here. And you will see this. This is what you're about to see. They're showing how you're going to portfolios will begin to have. And I've always used the term. I've always said that anywhere from 0.5% to say 2% would be allocated to digital assets. This article gives an literally they're, they're showing you how this is going to work right here. Um, they're showing and this is their allocation. They in in that um you know, one to five percent in a portfolio, they would allocate the digital assets across this. So what they're doing is, is they're giving an example, adding one percent digital assets. And, and that one percent is let's say a person let's say a person has five hundred thousand dollars and they're heading towards retirement. They got one percent in digital assets. And what they're saying here is that that allocation increased the hypothetical simulated cumulative return by six point nine percent without materially increasing volatility to improved risk adjusted returns by 20%. Then they tried adding 3% and they showed what the returns would be. Now all these financial advisors and these investment firms are going to have to see is some of this type of thing. See some numbers and trust me, they've already seen the numbers. This is already in the works. The allocation of digital assets and it will be somewhere between 0.5. I don't know if it'll be as high as five on average, but somewhere that th these I'll go a step further. And I've said this before too, that there are literally brochures that are being printed as I talk that, that are, are creating allocations of assets. And, and what this area would be is allocations for people's, for these financial advisors, clients, 
maybe 20% stocks or, you know, 10% bonds, uh, maybe one or 2% gold or gold and silver, but you're going to see allocations, maybe um, 10 or 15% in REITs, which are real estate investment trusts. You're going to see this. This is where the world is about to go. This is the first time a new asset class has happened since 1696 when the Bank of England created bonds. And I think that's the right year. So people ask me, why am I so excited? It's not just what Ripple's doing and XRP's doing. It's not just um, what a lot of the a lot of the new use cases with a lot of these other digital assets, but it's it's the fact that it's a new asset class and that I see right before my eyes what I used to see as a financial advisor. These guys are already gearing up to to tell their clients to allocate a certain percentage. All they're waiting on is to figure out how they get paid, and and the first step of figuring out how they get paid is backed. Backed is, is the first traditional financial firm that is coming into this space. Once they come in, it will legitimize because this is owned by the New York Stock Exchange. Then everything's legitimate. It's going to legitimize all of this that we've been talking about. And once they legitimize it, then you'll start seeing all these shiny brochures come out about al asset allocation with digital assets in the portfolio. Then the financial advisors, it will be explained to them how they make their money. And that's what it's all about for them, folks. It, it just is. And finally, I want to end by showing you this. I got this from AdX Light, Lighting the Way. If you think like everyone else, no matter how smart or experienced you are, you'll hit the same, same ceiling. Are you a sheep or a shepherd? I'm an XRP shepherd. We can never break the ceiling. And he sent me this. This is how successful people think differently. Successful people come from all walks of life, yet they all have one thing in common. Where others see impenetrable barriers, they see challenges, challenges to embrace and obstacles to overcome. Their confidence in the face of hardship, hardship is driven by their ability to let go of the negativity that holds so many otherwise sensible people back. Obstacles do not block the path. They are the path. This perspective help successful people think differently than everyone else to everyone else, which is important because if you think like everyone else, no matter how smart or experienced you are, you'll hit the same ceiling by thinking outside the box and going against the grain. Successful people rise above their limitations. And I told you folks yesterday, one of my friends who's a nice guy, but he's a small minded guy sends me a, an article about some guy that lost a lot of money on, on Bitcoin. That's all that friend of mine will probably ever see. He will never dig deeper than that. Let me tell you what he won't see, okay? The things that he won't see, he won't see this tweet from Leonidas that shows uh, the track record of what XRP's done. He won't see these historic highs and lows. He will not see what XRP has sent. He will not see what the crypto utility guy sent me, and he will not see what the modern portfolio will look like in the next few years. And he will not see that backed the New York Stock Exchange is creating their own digital asset exchange. He will not see that Fidelity is coming, has their own digital asset exchange, or that T TD Ameritrade um, is about to open up crypto to their 11 million customers and then the dominoes will fall. He'll see none of that. And the reason he will see none of that is because he does not think as, a, as successful people think. He thinks as the sheep think. He thinks as one of the crowd. And for that reason, he will always be one of the crowd. God bless him. Some people are destined to be a face in the crowd. The digital asset investor is not one of them. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'm the digital asset investor. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And I, I don't know that I've told you all this enough, but if you'll hit the little bell um, on, on YouTube, that is what will no get you notifications every time I post a new video. Thank you for listening.